In this video, we'll be talking about the diaphragms and effusions, which finishes our ABCDE mnemonic for reading chest x-rays. So when assessing the diaphragms, you want to make note of their shape and position. Remember that the right hemidiaphragm is higher than the left due to the position of the liver underneath it. On the left side lies the stomach, and sometimes you'll be able to see an air bubble like you do here. This is a gastric bubble representing air in the stomach, or sometimes even the colon, depending on its position within the peritoneum. However, keep in mind that air immediately underneath the diaphragms on this chest x-ray is not normal. This is suggestive of a pneumoperitoneum, usually from a perforated viscous, as in the case of a perforated peptic ulcer. In this case, a surgical consultation is required, as this patient may need to go to the operating room. When assessing the shape, each hemidiaphragm usually has a curved shape like you see here. However, they may be flat as in the case in patients with COPD or in patients with very severe asthma, which are both obstructive lung diseases leading to overinflation. When you look at this chest x-ray, what do you notice? You might note that the lungs are overinflated, and you could determine this by counting the ribs you see in the lung fields. If you haven't seen the video on chest x-ray anatomy and how you could determine overinflation, be sure to check out part 1 in this series in the link below. In addition to making note of the curved shape of our diaphragms, make sure to follow them from edge to edge. That means from the pleura all the way to when it meets the cardiac silhouette. At the pleural edge, the diaphragms meet to make the costophrenic angles. This space right here should be sharp. Blunting of these costophrenic angles, like you see here, can imply many things, one of which is an effusion. This is a perfect segue into effusions, because after looking at this x-ray, you might be thinking about what the effusion is. If you're not already thinking this, then maybe looking at this x-ray will help shift your thought process. So it's pretty obvious there's something right here. It's an effusion, but what type of effusion? Remember that effusions can be either transitative or exudative. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, you can learn more about effusions by checking out our video on Light's criteria and plural fusions in the link below. But like I said, effusions can come in two types, and in order to determine what type of effusion your patient has, you will likely need to obtain a sample of the effusion via a thoracentesis. And when you have the sample of the effusion, you can test it and determine what type of pleural effusion your patient has using Light's criteria. But remember, not all effusions look so obvious. Here's an example of a small effusion versus this one with a very large pleural effusion. In this case of smaller pleural effusions, not all need to be drained and tested, especially if these effusions are not causing your patients any significant symptoms and are expected to resolve without intervention. So in summary, the diaphragms normally have a curved shape. Remember that the right hemidiaphragm will appear higher than the left because of the position of the liver underneath it. Sometimes, you could see air underneath, which represents colonic or gastric air. But air that is immediately underneath the diaphragms can be a sign of a pneumoperitoneum and should not be missed. Lastly, make note of the costophrenic angles. These should be sharp and well-defined. Blunting of these angles can indicate that a pleural effusion is present.